Well, good evening, everybody. It's uh, Tuesday night, and uh, come on in. I'm Natalie Owens, and uh, just here to share with you tonight. Hi, Nafisha. Good to talk to you. Good to see you, actually. Wanda, come on in, you guys. It's Tuesday, and I'm um, happy to be here with you guys tonight, feeling much better, much better, I must say. Um, I'm Natalie, and I thank you guys for joining me, for taking time out of your day to join me tonight. And I want to tell you, uh, I'm not here to help everybody, but I am here to help somebody. So if that somebody is you, I thank you for joining me tonight and uh, for being a part. Thank you for jumping on. Good evening. Good evening. Come on in, everybody. So tonight I, um, I had a topic uh, planned um, that I was going to share with you guys titled, Who the Heck is Stanley Storage? But I think I'm going to hold that and um, share that maybe at the beginning of the year. But tonight I wanted to talk to you about something. I have a mentorship program. And in this program, uh, the, my clients in the, in the program are doing amazing, amazing work, I must say. But I have about 32 people, I think, 30, 32 women in this program. And um, each month we have a topic, but this month I had a topic and I gave them some questions about distractions and detours. And so um, sometimes we don't even know that we're um, being distracted by something when we're in the process of something else. Sometimes we don't even know that we're being distracted uh, or that we're taking a detour until we get there or we decide to go back to what we originally started with and it's no longer there. Or I've, I've, I've uh, stepped away from it and it's not finished, it's not completed. And we have a habit of uh, taking detours in our lives that take us away from what we're supposed to be doing. And um, we don't know that we've been distracted until we go back and I'm in the same place you know, at the end of the year that I was at the beginning of the year. So tonight I want to talk about uh, distractions and detours. And I want to first say distractions and detours come because um, we, we are amazing. God made us, the scripture says, we are fearfully, fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are his works. And so um, we're, we're, God created us to be the best of everything he created. And why we settle for less, I have no idea, but there's so much, you always hear me talk about the possibility and the potential and um, everything that's already in us. And oftentimes we spend a lot of time looking for um, what, we, what we think we need to complete us somewhere else. And so everything that we need to be great, all of our, all of our potential, all of our, um, all of our potential, uh, all of our greatness, all of our creativity, all of, I see you boss chef 76. Thank you for coming in tonight. Um, everything that we need. Hi, Desiree. I see you. Um, everything that we need is already in us. My talent, my creativity, my purpose, um, my gifts, my intelligence, my uh, my strength. Um, we all we all we have it in us already. But think about this. Think about how much time you spent looking for something to complete you, looking for a person to complete you, looking for a career to complete you, looking for more money to complete you, looking for your friends to be something to you to fill voids that are so deep that another person can't feel them. For two reasons, they can't feel them. One, they can't feel them because they have, they have uh, reservoirs of their own. They have these voids and we, everybody at some time or another has had these voids in their life. So people can't feel your voids because they have their own void. And then the second reason that they can't feel the void is because God didn't make us to fill each other's voids. I don't have what it takes to help you, to cause you to, 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 to fill your void. Because if I knew what it took to fill your void, guess what I would be doing? I would be filling my own. And so think about how much time you have wasted, you are wasting, or hopefully after tonight you won't waste, how much time you've wasted looking for somebody else to fill the void. Sometimes, some of us, we can't, I can't even enjoy me because I'm so busy 
trying to find somebody to be with, to enjoy my life with. And I tell, I tell married women all the time, I just said to someone in mentorship, there are people who are married who are lonely. Listen to me. There are married people who are connected to each other, sleep in the bed with each other every night, but they are lonely because I had an expectation of the person I'm married to fulfill this void in me. And guess what? They don't have what it takes to do it. They can't do it. And so I often say expectation when directed the wrong way breeds disappointment. Here I am, I have this great expectation of my husband and my husband can't fill my void. He can buy me everything. I can buy my own self everything. I can have everything. But I'm still, I still have a void. I still have an emptiness. And so as a result, rather than trying to find what my reason is in life, and rather than trying to find what my purpose is in life, and rather than pulling out all these great things that God has put in me, I'm in, and instead of staying on the highway to get to my destination, I'm taking detours. And you look up and I'm in a relationship with you know, one of the three little pigs. And then I'm in a relationship with Bugs Bunny. And then I'm in a relationship with Donald Duck. And then I'm in a relationship with Minnie Mouse. And then I'm in a relationship with Cinderella. You keep taking all these detours and it causes you to miss the possibility of the destination in front of you. No person can fill the void that you need filled. So let's talk about your detours and your distractions. Here you are, God has put you on this highway called life. And he says, your destination is, you know, Virginia on the East Coast, other side of America or wherever you're traveling from, traveling to, he says, or uh, wherever you're traveling from, he says, but that's your destination. It's gonna take you a few, a few days to get there. But we get off at every exit we see because we get caught up in the oohs and the ahs. Oh, ooh, there's a, Ooh, over there, there's a, and ooh, over there, there's a, and we get distracted from what our intention is, and we get distracted from what our purpose is. So look at the power of distraction and detours. Distractions and detours will never be what you're not interested in. Listen to me. Distractions and detours will never be what you're not interested in. So spiritually, what's a distraction? Hey, Renetta, I see you, B. Gates. What's a, spiritually, what is a distraction? So sometimes church can be a distraction. I was listening to T.D. Jakes the other day, and he said there are four groups of people that come to church. One group of people is, uh, it's embedded in them. We get up on Sundays and we go to church, and you just go to church because You've been raised to go to church. On Sunday, your mother might not even be here anymore. Your parents might not be here anymore. But on Sunday mornings, we got up and we went to church. You better get up and go to church. I don't care how late you stayed out the night before. My mother and father say, you better get up and you better go to church. So he said, you have the church course and they have to be in church every Sunday, no matter how, how they live. And then he said, it's those people who come just for the music. They need to come and they need to hear their favorite singers to feel like they've really been in church. They need to come and they need to hear good music. They need to hear good singing. He said, and then those, there are those people who come just to hear Bishop. And he said, and when Bishop is not here, they don't stay at church. He said, but then you have those people who come for the presence of God. I don't want the routine. I don't care who the singer is. I don't care who's bringing the word. I need to worship. I need to eat and I need God's presence. And he said, and he said, and the people who come just for the presence of God wishes that all the other three groups weren't there because you got the people who come to church because you've been taught to come to church every Sunday. You should be in church because the Lord wants you in church. And sometimes my best worship is not at the church. My best worship is at my house. But some people have to go to church no matter how much they're, how they're living. I just got to be in church. The second group of people, they come because I need to hear the music. The third group comes because of who their favorite preacher is. Listen, you're going to miss heaven because some, some preachers that are your favorites might not be making it. He said, but then you get the true worshipers. As he told the woman at the well, there will come a time when the true worshipers will worship him in spirit 
and in truth. Not just worship, but the truth part is with the knowledge of how to worship him. Worship is not what I do on ch at church on Sunday. When I get to church Sunday, it's because I'm excited because I've been worshiping all week in my house. So he says, so spiritual detours are, I got to get to church. Spiritual detours are, oh, so-and-so is preaching. Spiritual detours are, girl, I love when she sings that song. You're taking a detour. God is trying to graduate you somewhere spiritually. He's trying to take you somewhere spiritually. He's trying to draw you closer to him spiritually. And you have these detours that you take for a favorite preacher. You have these detours that you take for a certain person to sing. You have these detours that you take because you just need to be in church on Sunday. And sometimes, and in some churches, the spirit of the Lord is not there. They're just going through the tradition of their routine. They're just going through the motion. The spirit of the Lord is not even in some places. But I, mean, I was in church and they, sung some, they sang some songs and somebody preached and we tell ourselves and we have church. Some places you go to worship are spiritual detours because the presence of the Lord is not in the building. Those are spiritual detours. What are, what are mental detours? So we have mental detours and we have emotional detours. Mental detours is, you know, I'm trying, I can't focus. I'm studying and I'm doing this, but I, I start going, oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. Ooh, look what is this. I got to look at this. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Mentally, we can't focus. Your thought process, your thoughts are all over the place. You get engaged in everything. Everything that is a reason, everything that is something, everything that should be, you, you, you're in the middle of it. It's a detour and it's a distraction from what you really should be doing. And I tell my clients all the time in coaching and in mentorship, get a plan for your life. Because when you have no direction for your life, you take all of the exits on the freeway. You get off the freeway and you just get back on. And then a mile and a half later, you get off the freeway and you get back on. And when you have, when you have no plan and you have no destination, I don't need to engage in all the exits down the 10 freeway getting to my house. And some of us take everything that pops up, I'm a part of it. I don't want to be a part of everything. You understand what I'm saying? Because where, where my, the plan for my life is taking me is my everything. So you need to find your everything so that you stop yielding to detours and distractions. They're so powerful. And these things are things that we like. They're things that take us away. There are things that pull us. You know, there are things that you should be doing and you look up and you can easily, you can easily get distracted from it. We easily get distracted from things. I'm sorry, you guys. We easily get distracted by things that we like. Things that we don't like don't, don't, don't interrupt us. If you're on a diet or you're fasting, what comes into your mind? Uh, uh, Brussels sprouts don't come to my mind when I'm fasting. You know, when you're trying to eat right and eat better, no, Brussels sprouts, Brussels sprouts don't show up. Eggplant doesn't show up. Bok choy doesn't show up on the list of desires when I'm trying to eat healthy, you know, or when I'm trying, when I'm fasting. None of that shows up as a distraction. You know, a whole grain bread that's kind of like cardboard, that doesn't show up. Or rice cakes, none of that pops up in my mind when I'm trying to fast, we have mental detours. What pops up in and out? Mm. I don't even eat in and out like that, but in and out pops up. What pops up? That red velvet cake with that buttercream icing. What pops up to distract me from what, I'm, what I should be doing? Mental distractions. We start out with a plan. We start out with an exercise program. We start out with a, and because I don't have a solid plan, a solid focus, I detour. And when you look up, I've left it. I've gone another route. Or here comes a bandwagon. I told you guys a few months ago about the bandwagon. The bandwagon comes on and some of us jump on every bandwagon that comes along. Everything that's going down, we jump on it. If you got a reason for a purpose, for a plan, for a cause, stand with that. I don't knock that. Everybody needs something to stand for, but not everything that comes along. You're easily distracted. You're mentally distracted. Some of us are emotionally distracted. We need a reason to feel bad. And sometimes it doesn't have to be a big reason. I'm sad because you're sad. 
you're distracted emotionally. I feel bad. Oh, you feel bad, so I feel bad too. I know what you said. I feel bad too. Some of us are easily emotionally distracted. And you need to bring all of that, all of that together. You need to focus your emotions, focus, focus your men mental uh, process. Focus your heart, focus spiritually. Some of us are financially, oh, this is a big one. Some of us are financially distracted. You ever go in, I'm gonna just say this. Have you ever gone in Target to get one thing? Everybody, everybody watching right now can say yes. You ever gone into Target to get one thing? And we've spent $180. This one thing cost me $180, but I got a, a, a colander. I got a rug for the bathroom. I bought some trash bags and I bought this wallpaper and I bought these hooks to hang some pictures and I bought this and I got this. Oh, and I need some socks. Then I had to get toothpaste and then I bought this. And you can get everything at Target. I've gone in Target with a list. So how do you beat detours and distractions when you do have a plan? So sometimes we have a plan and we still get distracted and we still take detours. All you have to do is come back to your plan. You don't ever, have you ever been driving and you get a flat tire and because you get a flat tire, you go back home? No, you fix the tire and you continue on the journey. So even with a plan, if you get distracted or you take a detour, you get back on and you continue in the process. But what beats it, what beats distraction and detours every single time is having a plan. And I asked my mentorship group, tell me what distracts you. Tell me how did your life get like this in this place, stuck for 10 years in your life, not advancing forward, not growing forward, having moments of success, but not having a lifestyle, not having a movement of sex success, not having a standard that you live by. How did you get to this place in your life? Because eventually after you detour and after you are distracted so many times, you, you forget the process. You just, you just forget where you were going. You forget what you were doing. And you look up and it's 10 years later. It's five, year, it's, it's five years later. And you ask yourself, what have I been doing? How did I allow myself to get to this? Why is it 10 years later and I'm still in debt? Why is it five, 10 years later and I still, I'm still living like this? Why am I 50 years old and this is all I have? Because you got distracted so many times that eventually you never, you forgot what the plan was. Distractions and detours will never be what you don't like. And all of these things that you like, they overtake you. They'll come in and bum rush you and they'll overtake you. And you'll look up and it'll be 10 years later and I'm 30 pounds heavier. And I look around, my, 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 my life is in shambles or this is happening. I haven't advanced any further. I have no accomplishments in my life. My creativity has died. My talent is no longer thriving. I still don't, I'm still broke. I'm still living from paycheck to paycheck because I kept taking detours. You know what the one major detour is? Fun. And I'm not saying don't live your life and don't have fun. I believe in, I believe, I love great vacations. Listen to me. I love amazing vacations. But it's time to do amazing vacations and then it's time to handle your business. And so a detour for you financially, if you are not able to have all the fun, you need to do more work and less fun because you made fun a detour and a distraction. You don't, you don't, I tell people, you don't have the money to do that. You don't have the money and you don't have the time to do that. That's a detour and that's a distraction. Remember your plan, remember your purpose. And that financial detour is, that the financial distraction is a monster. Because we, we buy things that we don't need, listen, to impress people that we don't even like. We do that all the time. Women do it really, women really do it. Women dress for other women. We don't dress for men. Because a man will tell you, you know, you didn't need to buy that. You didn't need to buy anything new. Women buy, buy, we dress and look for other women. You don't see, very, very seldom do you see men on social media, you know, kind of flossing what they wear or what their hair looks like. 
unless it's a business, unless they're modeling, unless, unless they're kind of in a business. But you don't see men posting pictures on social media like you see women, because women see me, love me. And we will, we will go buy, we, that's why we have an abundance of stuff. Men don't have abundance of shit that they wear. They don't, they're different. And for us, we, 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 we get distracted easily financially. And then we look up and we don't have certain things that we need to live. It's good to live day to day, but ask me how many people come when somebody dies and people don't have insurance, but they were at all the parties and they had a, they had a fly car and they had nice clothes, but somebody died and they don't even have insurance. And I talk about all of this because we deal, I deal with all of this. I deal with from life insurance to marriage, to children, to, to from little children to grown children. I, did, I see all of it. I see all of it. In mentorship, in ministry, I see all of the issues of life. And we, we will pretend that we don't have it, but distractions and detours keep us away from planning our lives of what our lives should be. And society says, just pretend that you are and you can fool everybody. But the person that you cannot fool is the person that you see in the mirror every day. Social media has deceived us to believe. People believe what they see about me on social media. That's who I really am. And we start believing what we post on social media, but my life is full of distractions and detours. And if you really start looking through my stuff, I've had, I'm always getting off. I'm, why are you getting off it right here? This isn't the exit. Oh, because I saw, I saw Target over there. Oh, because I saw Coles over there. I'm getting off over here. Some of us are saying, you know what? Some of us are living a great life, but I don't have a savings account. And I had a couple come to me about seven years ago. And he said, I make this much money a year, $12,000, I mean a month, $12,000 a month, but I can't rub two nickels together. I said, bring me two bank statements. Bring me two separate statements and let's find your extra money that you say you don't have. And you bring home $12,000 a month. So I go down the statements and I highlight one account one statement with a yellow sharpie i mean yellow highlighter the other one i highlight with a pink highlighter so on one i highlighted all of the the times they went to dinner all the times that they ate out listen to me you you this is financial detours all the times that they ate out a starbucks drink a hot dog on the stick at the mall pizza you know, running the Chipotle, dinner for the family, treated your friends to drinks. I highlighted all of that. That total came up to like $2,800 some dollars a month. On the other one that I highlighted with the yellow, it was the groceries they went to the store and bought. And the groceries came up to $1,700, little over seventeen, not even $1,710, like $1,703. But $1,703 was groceries in the house, but more than the groceries in the house was the food that they ate outside of the house. Financial detours. So $3,000 almost you spend away from home buying food, Starbucks, drinks, hanging out with friends, in the mall grabbing something to eat, just running around driving. And so I said to him, here's, here's um, almost $4,000 in food in your house and outside of your house. But I'll tell you this, it's a domino effect. If you're distracted with your finances, you're probably distracted in your marriage because of the finances. You, you and your wife probably do like this because you're distracted with your finances. It's a domino effect. So if the money is tight in the marriage, that distraction causes the marriage to be forced to be at odds. But if you eat this much out away from your home, you also probably have health distractions and detours where your health is not as good because you eat out a lot. And people can't cook the food to make you better health wise. You need to cook it. So when I, when I have one distraction in my life that's overwhelming, it probably affects other things in my life. Let me tell you. So he said, yeah, I have high blood pressure and I'm, I'm a diabetic. He was 42 years old. And I said, if you spend this much money eating fast food and restaurants and hanging out and da-da-da-da-da, 
you probably have some health distractions too. And the reason you probably eat out is because you have some time management distractions. Because a lot of the places that they were eating out were, I was driving through, grabbing something, on my way, picking up, doing, you know how we just drive through and we grab something and we grab every, you know, four or five days a week, you grabbing something to eat. So here's one distraction, my financial distraction that has affected my marriage, that has affected my health, that has affected my time. I said, and you're probably running from place to place to place so you grab something to eat. But all the food that you bought for the month, that $1,700, it just sits in the house and it goes to waste. And that's just the financial distractions. Um, we're not going to look at what we have in our closet, how much stuff we have. Financial distractions. So what are your distractions and your detours? Everybody has them. And these, these distractions and detours, they're all connected. They just link up together. And remember, none of the distractions and detours are things you don't like. Nope. What, they didn't have bought egg, eggplant at the market. Nope. Wasn't that? It's not things that you don't like. It's what you like that causes you to detour. Some of us have distractions in our discipline and, 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 and focusing. I'm easily pulled away. And I had to learn that I can't, I can't let people interrupt my time and interrupt my day and interrupt my plan. So I, I make time for when I want to hang out and when I need to spend time by myself and when I need to get things done, I make time for it. You make time for it. Some of us are saying, Lord, bless me. God bless me. Bless my finances. Lord, bless my finances. But I'm so distracted in my life. I can't discipline myself enough to, to be a blessing for my own finances. And when you're asking God to bless your finances, are you asking him to send you a check in the mail just out of nowhere? Or are you asking him to make you capable of going get, to get the money or the, uh, to, to, to bring about an idea or to stir your creativity or to build your talent to bring about whatever you need to do to go get the finances? But if you're saying, God bless my finances, like he's going to touch your finances and money's going to just, you know, rain from the sky, it's not happening like that. What we need to be praying is not God bless my money, not God bless my health, not Lord bless my marriage. Lord, give me more hours in the day. You don't need that. I need, to, I need discipline because I'm even distracted in my discipline. Yeah, I start working out and start doing this and start doing this and then I drift. We need discipline. We need discipline with time. We need discipline with our health. We need discipline with our money. We need discipline with our gifts and our talent. We need, to, we need discipline with our purpose. Sometimes I'm all over the place with what I'm purposed to do. I've learned this in 25, 30 years of ministry. Everybody is not for me to help. Because mm -mm. the people, listen, you can throw the life jacket to some people, but they want you to jump in the water. And sometimes years ago, eager in ministry and young in ministry, trying to jump in the water to save people and they choking me. You know, they choking you, you trying to save them and they choking you and scratching you and pulling you under and tearing up your clothes. Can't help everybody. Everybody doesn't want to be helped. Some people want to be pacified. Some people want to be nurtured. You okay, you all right, okay, it's gonna be good, it's okay. Not everybody wants to be helped. Not everybody wants to be helped. I told you with the men at the pool of Bethesda, and he was at the pool with all these sick people. And Jesus showed up. And this was the thing. They were at the pool of Bethesda. He said, I've been here 38 years. He had been there longer than Jesus had been alive. And he was there with people who were sick, just like him. Be mindful of your circle. Be mindful of your circle. I don't want to be around people just like me. Be mindful of your circle. I want a circle of people who challenge me to be better. Don't let me sit in an infirmity for 38 years. He was around some people who let him be like that for 38 years, and nobody told him, dude, you got 364 days to roll to the edge of that pool and fall in the water when the angel shows up. Nobody thought that. Nobody, and then when Jesus comes along, Jesus says, you want to be made whole? You want to walk? 
Jesus didn't anoint him with oil. He didn't pray for him. He didn't sit down on the mat. He didn't hug him. He didn't tell him, the Lord, the Lord heard your prayer. The Lord, you know, all the long, drawn out stuff that we say. And I tell you all the time, as preachers, we've handicapped the church. You don't even need crutches anymore. We're still giving you crutches because it makes us feel good. Come on here. It makes me feel like I'm really doing something because I'm helping you in your infirmity. He didn't sit down on the mat. He didn't pull out any oil. He didn't pray for him. He said, do you want to be made whole? And the man said, what? That did, here comes a distraction, an emotional distraction. I don't have anybody to put me in the water when the water is troubled. So it's somebody else's fault that you are infirm, that you've been sitting here for 38 years. It's somebody else's fault. That's an emotional distraction. It's called self-pity. It's called victim mentality. I don't have anybody to help me get in. You've been here longer than I've been alive. And it's somebody else's fault that you haven't been into the water to be made whole. Jesus didn't help. Jesus didn't touch him. But he challenged him. And sometimes, listen, to come out of your distractions and your detours, you don't need me to patty to pity you. You don't need to be, you don't need to be, you don't need empathy. You need a challenge. You need somebody to tell you what everybody else is not telling you. And in today's society, we like for people to lie to us. We like for people to tell us what we need to hear. We like for people to tell us what keeps us, us comfortable. We like for people to tell us what won't hurt our feelings. Sometimes I need my feelings hurt so I can think about what you said so I can change my behavior. But we want to hear what we want to hear that keeps us, because if you know what you need to hear to make you better, why don't you say it to yourself? Listen to me. If you know what you need to make you better, why aren't you saying it to yourself? So when Jesus comes along and Jesus says, do you want to walk? This, is, this was the power of it. All these people here on five porches and he came to me and he challenged me. Do you want to walk? And what I did is I gave him an excuse. Well, see, I grew up in where I grew up. My family didn't and nobody went to college. So we can't. And then because society says and then because Trump is president and then because no, 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 no. God came directly to you and challenged you and you begin to give him all these reasons as to why you can't. Mentally distracted, emotionally distracted. It's somebody else's fault that I'm not. And it's nobody else's fault. Come on here. It's nobody else's fault. The scripture says nothing is impossible with God if you believe. And either we believe it or we don't. Either we believe it or we don't. He says you can speak to the mountain and the mountain be moved. Either we believe it or not. I'm not affected by what society does. Either we believe it or we don't. But it's easy to take the distractions and the detours. It's easy to get off the freeway than to sit in, in traffic. Why can't I sit in traffic to get to my destination? Because I don't have any patience. Because I don't have any patience. And when we were young, starting out in ministry, we made a lot of mistakes because we thought we knew it all. Be mindful not to know it all. Get around some people that can teach you something. But 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 because when you're younger, what you have is your you have your emotional state. You have and you have some knowledge, but what you don't have is experience. <laughs> oh, you don't have experience. You know how many people come back to me because they have an experience. And you let them go because they need to get, they need to make that mistake. They need to do that because they need to get the experience. But when I learn better, come on here, I do better. Wisdom, see, you have knowledge, but you have no experience. Therefore, you don't have wisdom. Wisdom is knowledge and experience together applied. And so we do a lot of emotional detours. We do a lot of emotional detours. 
We do a lot of what we feel detours, but we don't have any, any we do a lot of, uh, uh, um, we do a lot of these detours, come on here, that we create. And sometimes we do these detours and these distractions into our 40s and our 50s and our 60s. Some people are still waiting for somebody to love them because I don't think the, the love that I have for myself is enough. That's an emotional detour. I just said to someone, you better learn to look around your house if ain't nobody there but you and learn to love who lives in that house if it's, if it's just you. Some of us are still waiting, still waiting for somebody to come and love us so much that we feel loved. You better learn to love you more than anybody else can love you because then you can teach them how to love you. I don't have a big expectation of other people like that in my life. I don't sit around, yeah, my friends, they didn't call me. I feel so bad. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Because what, what I am going to do is keep living. And when I want to go by myself, I go by myself. I don't call anybody. And people have that prerogative to live their lives like that too. But you can't get distracted in emotional detours talking about what people owe you and what people should be to you. You should be everything that you're, you're saying somebody else should be to you, you should be to yourself first. God created you, listen, I told you, he created you to be amazing. And I think we sell ourselves short sometimes. Sometimes I see where people post to my haters. For what? If they're your haters, are they reading your stuff? For, I, don't, I don't understand it. Somebody help me with that. Somebody help me with that. Why do, why do I need to address the people that hate me? If you mad at me and I don't know you mad at me, I'm going to get you a gift for Christmas. I'm going to get you a cape so you can be super mad. But if you're mad, if you're angry with me and you're telling everybody else that you're angry with me but me, I'm going to get you a Christmas present. I'm going to get you a birthday present. I'm, I'm going to even get you something on Mother's Day. You're not a mother or a father. I'm going to get you a cape, and it's going to say SM, super mad. Because that's just a detour I'm not going to take. And people come all the time and say, well, so-and-so said, good. You don't need to tell me. They told you. Evidently, they didn't want me to know because they told you. But that's not a distraction for me. I remember when that used to be a distraction. And the girl was coming out the trunk at church. As she was coming out the trunk at my kids' school, she was coming out the trunk. At, she was coming out the trunk with family. I was she. I kept I kept her in the trunk, but I kept it unlocked so she could get out. But at this point in my life, mm -mm, very little distractions, very little detours. You understand me? Don't have time for it. Do what you do. What you do. Do what you do. And my thing is, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a push you. I'm a support you. You need to do it well. I do know the more that I'm focused, the more people I can help. And if I'm just, if I'm taking all these detours in my own life and getting off the freeway, never getting to where I'm supposed to be, I can't do what God purposed for me to do. And the other thing, if I don't have a plan, I'm easily distracted and I take detours. But if you don't know what your purpose is, you're easily distracted and you take detours. If you're still looking for who you are, if you're still trying to figure out who you are, and listen, some people say, well, that takes a lifetime. No, no, no. Growth is a lifetime, but finding your purpose isn't a lifetime. So you find your purpose at the end of your life, and how much time do you have to, to do it? No. But most people are not in pursuit of what, they're, what they were put on earth to do. And some people say, well, I'm here to do the will of the Lord. What is it? Details. Because we go to church, and we do what we do at church, but when you're not at church, do you still do what you do? So my purpose is to speak, speak life to people, to empower people, to develop people. And, and the one purpose that I have, I do it at church. I do it at, if I'm at the hospital. I do it at the school with the children, with the parents. I do it at, in my business. I do it with my husband. I do it with my children. I can do it in the market. But my purpose is to empower people. That's what my business is, the empowerment suite. And I do it through coaching. I do it through ministry. I do it through teaching. I do it through mentorship. I do it through family. I do it with friends. That's what my purpose is. And if you are connected to me in any kind of way, you know sometime or another, we're going to have a conversation. Just a casual conversation about how great you can be. Don't sell yourself short. Go make your life happen. 
What are the details? Well, I'm doing the work of the Lord. What is, what is that? Because singing in the choir is not your purpose because you don't sing in the choir at the market. Can't sing in the choir at the doctor's office. Can't sing in the choir, you know, with the kids down at the pool. Can't sing in the choir. But what, 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 did, he, what did he pour into you that should be poured out and you've been distracted with, you know, the distraction, the spiritual distraction of going to church. You, you were the first, got to be in church. Or, gotta, or you're emotionally distracted. Well, Lord bless me. I'm going to help some people. You can't help anybody else because you still think, because you always need help. Are you emotionally distracted? Are you mentally distracted? You just can't focus. Today you're a nurse. Tomorrow you, you're a hula hoop dancer. Then next week you're doing, a, you know, you're dealing at the casino. You're a dealer at the casino. Then the week after that you're doing a street sweeping. Every week is something. Are you just distracted? What is my why? What is my reason? And when you find your reason, when you find your why, you pull it all in and you shape it like Play-Doh. You shape it, you mold it, you pack it, you streamline it down. And you and so as no matter how many people call you to get to want you, I get phone calls all the time. Can you come and speak? Nope. Can you come in? And one lady told me, the Lord told, showed me you working with young ladies in Nickerson Garden. I said, no, he didn't, because he, if he told you, shouldn't he tell me? And she said, well, I saw you in Nixon Garden working with teenagers. You didn't see me working with teenagers. I raised teenagers. I raised six. And maybe if I had two or three, but I raised six. And he didn't, he didn't call me to do teenagers. He didn't call me to do children. Because the whole time I'm raising all six of them, that's what I did, children. Dance classes, basketball, PTA, uh, all of it. Theater, plays, dinners, luncheons, trips. He didn't call me to do teenage girls. No, he didn't. I know specifically what he called me to do. So just because you invite me, and I'm not so big-headed that girl, they invited me to speak. I need to go over here. and I don't go everywhere. Because some places are detours and distractions. And I can be so important that I take every invitation that comes. But I take very few invitations. And not because I'm so good, not because I'm so stuck on myself, but everything is not my assignment. And I know the detours. Mm -mm, I don't need to go there because this will take me off course of where I should go. Well, what if women call you to come speak for Women's Day? I can do a Women's Day at my church. Well, what if women want you to come and speak at their conference? I, I do my own conference. I do my own workshops. I can do my own thing at my own church. But sometimes because I have that void, I take this detour because I need, I need attention. I need to people to see me and I need for people to hear me. No, you need to do what you're supposed to be doing. And elevation and growth and change and success will come when you do what you're purposed and plan to do. Stop taking all these detours and connecting and doing everything that comes along. Every invitation is not my invitation. November last year, my mother passed. And the day of my mother's funeral, I had already booked this event. And I told the Lord, the Lord said, don't take any engagements. That year, I only had three, three engagements last year. And that one, that, the last one of the year happened to fall on the day of my mother's funeral. And the Lord said, take it. Because this was one of the three. Don't you know a year before, at the beginning of the year, December before that year, 2017, that the Lord said, take these three that he knew my mother would be gone and that I would be speaking on the day of her funeral. God already knew that. And I could have been emotionally distracted and said, oh, I can't do it because my mother, but absent from the body present with the Lord, my mother was 92 years old. And how do you know he's not setting you up to see if you're going to take a detour or if you're going to follow what he planned? Because he said, and I learned this years ago with my daughter, if you take care of my business, I'll take care of your business. And sometimes we take detours and we want to go pull off into a parking lot somewhere and we want God to do something different on the detour. And he says, I'm not doing anything different because you detoured. I'm not going to do anything different. You need to stay the course. Sometimes he wants to see how we're going to respond emotionally. Sometimes he wants to see how we're going to respond financially. Sometimes he wants to see how we're going to respond mentally. Sometimes he wants to see how we're going to respond in discipline. Sometimes he wants to see if we're going to really focus. 
Is everything in my life somebody else's fault? If, is everything going wrong in the world somebody else's fault? And we like to blame people for what we're not, for, for why we didn't, for what we're not. We like to say it's somebody else's fault. I dare you to sit down this, tonight, this weekend, count all the detours that you've taken this year. Count how many times you've been distracted this year. Count how many relationships you've had for the last three or four years. Count, just count. Count, how, look, at, look at how, go over your bank statement and look at the distractions on your bank statement. Just, 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 just go back. Here we are at the end of the year almost. Go back and look over your life. Go back and look over your life and see how many distractions or detours came in and took you off course. I'll tell you this. Go back to your goal list at the beginning of the year and tell me how you were distracted, how you got distracted. Tell me, tell me where you are in your goals for this year. Because most, most people set goals and we don't know where they are by the end of the year. Because I got so distracted, I got so caught up in other things that had nothing to do with where I was going. The Chevron on the side of the freeway, you got a full tank of gas. Why are you pulling into the Chevron? Because I needed to get some chips. You know, if you ever taken the, the, the drive to Vegas, everybody stops at Barstow. Everybody. And I remember Barstow was just, years ago, Barstow was just the train with the McDonald's in it. And so we would stop there because we were a drill team, but it was the McDonald's there. But now Barstow is, is, is huge. You know, I mean? you go right past the train now because that first stop where the Chipotle is and the Chevron, everybody stops there now. If you've been going to Vegas for basketball, you know what I'm talking about. Or just on vacation, you know what I'm talking about. But everybody detours to Barstow because that's the last stop before the big destination, Right? And some of us make every destination the last stop. We get off all the time. We get off everywhere because we just have to go see. My, intent, my attention span isn't that long. It's not that focused. And I want to hear God and I want to do what he says and I want the blessings in my life. But I'm easily distracted, Natalie. I'm easily distracted. I lose focus so easily. And this is the other thing. This is the last thing. You have to be worth you being focused. You, you have to be worth not taking a detour. You have to be worth meeting your destination. You have to be worth what you've been purposed to do. You have to know that you're worth it. Listen, you, you, have, you have to know that you are worth the destination that God has put in front of you. You got to know you're worth it. And I don't need anybody to hold me accountable. And I don't need anybody to approve me. And I don't need anybody to like me. And I don't need people to understand. And I don't need this. And I don't need you to fill the void in my life. And I don't need you to call me and, and check on me. I don't need you to. Because some of us are holding people hostage to that. Not only are you holding you hostage, but you are holding other people hostage to what you need that they cannot give you because you don't even know how to give it to yourself. You don't even know how to give it to yourself. You don't even, you don't even know how to get you there. You're going to hold me accountable to getting you there. Well, they did it like this. If you know what you need, do it. And I tell people that all the time. I have a problem saying it. Well, I feel what you gave me was too hard. And then it wasn't. And I just couldn't. I couldn't get that done. Oh, okay. That's fine. Well, what else do you want? Nothing. Because that was the assignment. And I do that in mentorship and coaching and in ministry. If I give you scriptures to read from counseling and you come back and say, well, I didn't read the scriptures because I didn't have time. Okay. Counseling session's over. Because your session, your counseling, your connection with God needs to be more important to you than it does to me. And you got to know you're worth it. So you can sit with me all day long, but I don't, I don't have a magic wand. Let it come forth. Boom. Let it happen in your life. Boom. I don't have a magic wand. It don't work like that. If, I, if you come to me, I had to do the work. A whole bunch of people did the work. Everybody that's somewhere that's doing something did the work. And so you can't come and get a, a shot ba 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 waved over you. And I'm a, remember, Jesus didn't touch you. He didn't break out with no oil. That makes us feel good. He didn't put. He didn't break out any oil. He didn't pray for him. He didn't touch him. He didn't sit down on the mat with him. 
you you want your life to be right? And I ask the question, are, and then I ask, are you willing to do the work? But you got to know you're worth it. And do you believe you're worth where you want to go? Do you believe you're worth what you want to accomplish? Do you believe you can put in the time for the money that you want to make? Do you believe if this is what your cause is, at all costs, you're going to hold up this thing and you're going to carry it? Do you believe it's worth it? And do you believe if it doesn't ever change, can you stay the course until you die? Martin Luther King did. If you choose this, you know you're helping people that don't want to be helped, that won't help themselves. Are you still sure you want to do this? Are you still sure you want to do this? Because some of us start out, you know what, and we get disappointed because we don't get the response from people that we thought we were going to get. And so we quit. We, we, dis, we detour. Well, I thought I was going to be more famous by now. I thought I was going to be much more wealthy by now. Building a business is no joke. And it's a many a days I wake up going, what am I doing? I don't, I, I, I don't need to work. What am I working for? Because it's what I love to do. And my husband says, you doing, what, are, what are you doing this for? Why don't you come on, let's go. Let's, what, are you, what are you doing it for? I can pick the job up and take it with me. What are you doing this for? Because I love to do it. I love to help people. I love to see people come in one way and then they leave with wings on their back. I love to help people. I love to empower people. And you got to know you got something in you, the same thing. And no matter how people, some people receive it and they take off. That's what mentorship is right now with these 30 people. Some people are taking off and some people still waiting for me to give them a pill to take. Some people are getting amazing results in mentorship and some people are getting minimal results because what you eat, what you take in is what you're, you're, what you're going to put out. Because some, some people are waiting for me to give them something because they don't know their value yet and they're, they're waiting for me to tell them how valuable they are to them. You need to know how valuable you are to you. You need to know that you're worth it and you need to be mindful of the distractions and the detours that rob you of greater in your life. Don't, don't jump on everything that comes your way. Everything isn't for you. Stop feeling you need to be a part because you're gonna miss something. Some things you need to miss. Sometimes I shut the news, you turn off the news, you watch the news and you can watch it all day. But by the end of the day, you are so a major distraction because you are so emotionally drained and so mentally caught up that it robs you. And some days you don't want to see anything. I need to go to bed at night with something. I need to read something or I need to watch something funny, but I can't go to bed after watching the news. If I watch the news, I need to watch something else because the distractions you wake up in the morning with those distractions. The world is going to hell in a handbasket. Oh, Lord, they're going to kill all the black people. And Lord, they're going to just. Distractions. Be mindful. I told my mentorship is it's about diet and exercise. And whatever you take in through your perception, whatever you eat visually, whatever you eat through smelling, whatever you eat from hearing, tasting, touching, whatever you perceive, whatever you take in, that's what your diet will be. Whatever you take in mentally, whatever you take in spiritually, that's what you will exercise in your life. Be mindful of what you take in. Be mindful of conversations you have. Be mindful of people that you talk to. Be mindful of what you watch on TV. Be mindful of the music you listen to. Be mindful of it because it's distracting you emotionally. It's distracting you mentally. It's distracting you spiritually. It's distracting you physically. Someone posted today, some people need to get off social media because some people are on social media to watch other people and you watch other people's lives so tough that it makes you feel bad about your own life. It depresses you that you don't have what they have. And you summed up their whole life in 20 pictures on their feed for the last three days. And it makes you feel terrible about your life that you aren't as advanced. People only put their good stuff. Nobody puts pictures on Instagram when they first wake up in the morning. Good morning. How y'all doing? Good morning. Nobody, nobody takes those pictures. And here we are looking at these people and getting depressed because... You, you, some people go stand in front of cars and take pictures and put them on Instagram, and that's not really their car. 
Or they bought an outfit to put on, to take a picture, to put on Instagram. And here I am going through the feed of Instagram, feeling bad because I don't have what they have. Mm, detour, 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 <laughs> distraction, distraction. Think about it. Write your distractions down. What pulls you away from your life and keeps you in a fog? What is, what's happening in your life? And this kept you in denial. You, you haven't advanced. You haven't started your business. You haven't started your exercise program. And the new year is coming, so we're going to write these resolutions and these goal lists, you know, that, that, that won't mean anything by the end of March. Until, and until you handle the symptom, you cannot have a cure. Listen, until you, until you define what, this, what the symptom is, what, I mean, the, the, the ailment, you, we have symptoms, but what is ailing you? You can't just, you can't just, that's why we cover the cure, we cover it up with everything, but the sickness keeps coming back. Because I don't know, I don't really know what it is. I don't know why it is, not even what it is. I don't really know why I'm like this. And you got to get to the why of the what. Because distractions come because I don't know what, because I don't know why, I mean. When you know your why, you won't be distracted. And most people don't know their why. Why am I here? Why am I, why me, God? Why am I going through this? Why not you? Why not you? And distractions will cause you to be the victim of a situation. Come on here. Instead of being the victor in this. Yeah, this happened to me. Yes, this happened to my family. But watch how we walk through this. Watch how we walk through it. 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 It's a mindset. It's a lifestyle. It's a standard. And nothing can stop it. Racism can't stop it. Uh, whatever can't stop it. Da -da 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 can't stop it. Non-believers can't stop it. You can't, it can't be stopped. It can't be stopped. It can't be stopped. It can't be stopped. Because greater is he that is in me. And I believe that. It can't be stopped. Not by another human being. It can't be stopped. Why not you? Why shouldn't it happen to you? Maybe it's God is allowing it to happen to you for you to be a voice. Because had it not happened to you, you'd be in your little cubby hole, you know, just living your life. Maybe there's something bigger in you that he wants to pull out of you to do as a result of the situation. But don't run from it. Don't take a detour. Don't run from it. Think about the people that you go to for help. When will you be the person that people come to? Think about all the people that you can call right now that always come through for you, that help you. But what happens when you pick up your phone to call them and they don't answer? I mean, you, you, you in an emergency. We get those calls. I'm trying to reach you guys. Where are you? Somebody texted me the other week. No, we're on vacation. Well, this happened. I, I don't know about it. I'm on vacation. I'll be back Wednesday. Well, can you know? And then I just stop answering because you, you're ignoring me. Because if you're one person texting me, I have seven more that are texting me as well with something that is not emergency. That's not an emergency. And if you have people that you go to for help, are you a go-to? Or when will you be a go-to person? When will you be the person to pull people out like people have pulled you out? When will you be a person to be a person of help and rescue and retreat and inspiration when you've gone to other people for that very same thing, at what point do you stay the course to become what God says you are? At what point do you stay the course to become everything that you're supposed to be? At what point do you stay the course and, and, and walk in your purpose to start your business, to elevate your life, to do whatever your cause is? At what point do you stand and, and, and take all the hits, take all the stuff, receive all the blessings? At what point do you get at what time do you get to that place where you know what? I'm not distracted anymore. I'm doing my purpose because this is what I'm supposed to do. E.T. Eric Thomas says, I get up every day with the mindset to grind. What other choice do you have? What, you, what else are you going to do? Watch TV? Uh, binge watch Netflix? What else is there but you don't get up to make your life happen every single day? He says, but every day, this is all I can think about. Be mindful of distractions and detours. I love you guys. Thank you for watching tonight. 
My book is here. We'll have it posted soon, a fresh 24. When you change the way you think, you can change your life. I have an event coming January 25th. We will have the information posted on next week, and there will be no live on next Tuesday. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. Enjoy your loved ones. Eat all the food you need to eat. Just get up and take a walk after that, and then come back and go to sleep, all right? I love you guys. God bless you guys. Thank you for watching tonight. Please share the video, and I'll tune in with you guys in two weeks from tonight. God bless you guys, and thank you. Good night. Technical, technical.